The only thing that capitalism is unmatched on is just creating new middlemen. There is no other economic system or process that could be as good at finding new ways to create additional middlemen. Wait, what? How U.S. companies get away with fueling Russia's military? Ooh, Johnny Harris is back. Vladimir Putin said moments ago that Russia will increase its airstrikes on Ukraine in the coming days, weeks, and months. After this, we're okay, moving I need on to show you oh. this missile really quick because it teaches us a lot. Oh, this is a Russian uh, missile. It's got wings on it. It can travel a very far distance. And Russia has been using these types of missiles in their war in Ukraine since the very beginning of the war. They fire them at railway stations and electric grids. And whenever something like this happens, investigators rush to the scene, not only to recover the casualties, to rush people to the hospital, but also to sift through this debris. <laughs> All this mangled metal and material. This missile debris contains important clues. If you zoom in, you're gonna see something crazy. This little component inside of this missile has the logo of a company called Vicor, which is an American company. Over the course of this war, investigators have been looking into this debris to try to understand how Russia is making their missiles, what ingredients they're using, and where those ingredients come from. So without Western technology, Russia wouldn't be able to build missiles. And it's not just one power converter one, from baby. Vicor. This missile is packed with microelectronics, the key, most sophisticated parts of the missile that come from the West. Like the communication controller, which is made by Zilog, another American company. The guidance system, which runs on three microprocessors, all three made by the American company Texas Instruments. And then, of course, the brains of the whole thing, the microchips. They're made by Intel, the American chip giant that is currently being subsidized by the U.S. government to make more chips. The future of the chip industry is going to be made in America. Made in America. All in all. I mean, let's just say this ain't the first time Intel's worked with some real baddies, if you know what I mean. Actually, as a matter of fact, most companies. Oh. It wasn't Intel, I was thinking of IBM. Yeah, my bad. Investigators from the Ukrainian government, from the Royal United Services Institute, or RUSI, and others found that Russia needs 450 Western-made components for their weapons, the majority of which come from the United States. This is stuff they can't make on their own. They need it from the outside. We know that the Russian systems, from their most basic systems to their most sophisticated systems, are critically dependent on Western microelectronics. Ukraine is making an effort to gather Western air defense, which then shoot down missiles that are made possible by the West, by Western microchips. That's Alexei Sorokin, the deputy chief editor of the Kyiv Independent, which is the largest English language newspaper in Ukraine. They've been covering the war. We've been working with them to investigate how technology is affecting this war. For this story, we looked into how this Western tech is making it into Russian killing machines. The Kyiv Independent received this leaked report from the Ukrainian government that gives us more clues as to how this technology is making it into Russia. Illegally flowing through a shadowy network of shell companies, fake aliases, circuitous shipping routes, all to evade sanctions and arrive to front companies for the Russian military. Many of them eventually ending up in missiles or drones or other vital weapons being used to invade Ukraine and kill its people. This is a quintessential case of modern war. <laughs> American companies are like, damn, oh, did we do that? <laughs> no. Oops. Oh, did I do that? Warfare. How microtechnology used for computers is being weaponized and flowing through the complicated global economy. I want to show you how this is happening and what can be done about it. I need to quickly tell you about another shadowy market. Thank you Incogni for sponsoring today's video. So what happens in the shadowy data broker market is that you have a profile, <laughs> all of this stuff that helps companies dude, and people dude. search sites target you. And 
Johnny Harris and Vox do the exact same type of like um, ad, which, you know, that makes sense. Johnny did use to work at Vox where they just like present the ad as though it's like literally educational content, which I feel like is, I mean, I'm, I, I, I like fun segues, but it does seem kind of odd and call you and email you and send stuff to your house. I find this fairly violating. So the way this works is you sign up for Incogni and you give them permission to act on your behalf, to go out and to make a request to these hundreds of data broker lists that you and I are on to tell them that you want to be off the list. And by law, these companies are required to take you off the list. That's what's awesome. Once you give them permission, you get access to this dashboard. You get to see all of the requests they've sent out. Since I signed up for Incogni, my phone has been quieter, my email's been more chill, my house has not been inundated with as much junk mail, and I feel a lot better knowing that my information is not on like people search sites or that insurance companies aren't using my browser history to like jack up my premiums. There's a link in my description, it's incogni.com slash Johnny Harris. You can sign up for the annual plan and get 60% off. You do the annual plan so that Incogni can be like constantly scrubbing you off of these lists because you're always being added to new lists. When you click on the unethical link, it helps support no, the channel too, so please use the link, but you also get that discount. Um, Thank I'm giving you, you the ad. for sponsoring today's video for supporting our journalism. And now we are going to unpack this thing that has been. There is nothing more ethical than like sitting through the entire ad read. What are you talking about? Like deep on our minds for several months now, which is the shadowy smuggling market that is getting American and Western tech into Russia. Get ready. Since the beginning of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February of 2022, Vladimir Putin's army has launched over 5,000 cruise missiles into Ukraine. What happened is Russia wasn't able to conquer Ukraine in the first month or two. In October 2022, Russia came up with this new tactic. It will use missiles to destroy Ukraine's energy infrastructure and kill Ukraine's economy and force people to negotiate. These missiles have killed thousands of civilians. They've leveled homes and communities, and they've destroyed the economy and daily life of many Ukrainians. So in response to this invasion, the West responded not only by giving weapons and money to Ukraine to fight this war, but also trying to cut Russia off from the global economy, including being cut off from these vital microelectronics that they need to build their missiles, to build their weapon systems. This is what sanctions do. It makes it illegal for a company like Texas Instrument or Intel to sell their microchips to Russia. Again, Russia can't make this stuff on their own. So the idea was that if you could cut Putin off of the chips, then he would eventually run out of the ingredients he needed to continue to make missiles and other weapon systems that he was using in Ukraine. Unless At they're being rerouted they by a third party. Russia has been able to produce more missiles in 2023 than it was able to produce in 2022. Russia didn't run out. The missiles kept flying and the drones kept coming. Well, tonight, a third of Ukraine is without power after Russia destroyed power stations in the last eight days. And to find out how this is happening, Ukrainian investigators have been gathering remnants of Russian weapons, bringing them to these missile graveyards. Like this one that the Kyiv Independent team helped us get access to. At these missile graveyards, investigators dissect the wreckage and look inside to understand how these Russian weapons work, to try to gain an advantage in this war. But what they found was surprising. Нидерланды, США, 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 Китай, Россия, Китай, США, Гонконг, Немеччина, Корея, Південна Корея, Швейцария. They were finding that these components were coming from American companies like Texas Instruments and analog devices. Investigators have looked into dozens of missiles and they keep finding the same thing. US and Gong Western war. technology I'm gonna build is you a somehow pie making what the it into Russian up. missiles Man, and drones long after economic sanctions should have cut off the flow. Fuck. These are the chips they need for their guidance systems, their wireless communication, for their targeting, critical components components that Russia can't make on their own. How exactly is the Russian military getting their hands on it's Western microelectronics even oh. after sanctions went I'm into good. place Thank you, though. that made it illegal for Western companies to send microelectronics to Russia? And the answer is this map.
This map shows at least a part of a shadowy network, a market, that Russia uses to keep vital technology secretly flowing into Russian weapons. This tech travels through the veins of the global economy, using loopholes, shell companies, and convoluted shipping routes to escape these sanctions. Now, let's be clear, this is not the whole network. This is a shadowy black market. It's very hard to see and to report on. But thanks to some amazing reporting by Reuters, by Ruth. Why are we watching propaganda videos? What do you mean? I always watch propaganda videos. I love Johnny Harris. See by the Kiev Independent, the Financial Times, and others, we've been able to piece together what this looks like, how Russia gets its hands on these microchips. Let's start here in New York City, where we know that two companies were registered in Brooklyn as electronic components distributors. Both of them were owned by the same three guys who used aliases like Nick Stevens or Geo Ross. These companies have been <laughs> shipping millions of dollars worth of electronics from various locations in New York to several middleman countries, countries that have no rules about sending stuff to Russia. From there, this technology was then shipped into Russia to a company that makes weapons for the Russian military. When these guys got busted, investigators found that the specific microchips that they were shipping into Russia were the specific chips that Russia uses for various weapon platforms that they're using in their war in Ukraine. In another case, this one company based in Singapore starts buying American microchips from the U.S. and selling- You mean China? Singapore China? That's right! God damn it, it's the Chinese again! I knew it! Somehow this is about TikTok. $250,000 worth of chips to a company inside of Russia who seemingly has nothing to do with the Russian government. That company then sold them to another Russian company called Robin Trade. But it turns out that Robin Trade is just one of many fake companies that sells to yet another fake company called Cernaya Engineering that we now know is actually just a front for the Russian spy agency, the FSB. This convoluted daisy chain of like fake companies is used to hide the fact that the FSB, the Russian intelligence agency, is procuring chips through this network to make it look like this was some civilian tech company importing these chips. One of the greatest tools in this network is the shell company. The fact that in our global economy, you can make a company by signing a few papers and paying a fee, and then you can start doing business under the name of that company. Like there was this one computer parts company in Germany that before the war was selling technology to Russia. But after Putin's invasion, EU sanctions banned that company from doing this. So the German company starts selling chips to this shell company in Turkey, which immediately turns around and sells them Let's right go. to Russia. Custom records oh, no. show that in just seven months, this new Turkish company sent $20 million worth of computer parts to Russia, including US-made <laughs> microchips. And the missiles just kept on flying. Ukraine says Russia has fired at least 80 missiles at targets across the- <laughs> Capitalism is so good. It just like, the only thing that capitalism is unmatched on is just creating new middlemen. Unmatched. There is no, like, there is no other economic system or process that could be as good at finding new ways to, to uh, create additional, additional middlemen. I'm technically a middleman between, you know, you and direct access to the news or even Johnny Harris. It's so good. We are so innovative when it comes to finding new ways of marketing the same product with, like, an additional layer. <clears throat> Turkey is in an especially funny situation. I guess so is Germany. So is every country mentioned here because like they're selling to both sides. Play both sides so you always come out on top, baby. Classic. So we can sanction Russia and basically enforce a blockade. But when Yemen does it, we bomb the shit out of them. Also, wasn't the whole reason Japan attacked PH was because we cut their uh, Pearl Harbor was because it cut their oil supply and basically enforced the blockade. So doesn't that mean that Perm Harbor attack was justified and Americans shouldn't be upset? Damn, dude, you got really mad. Or is it just another American double standard? Yeah, no. Of course, Pearl Harbor was not justified. And neither is America's bombing campaign. Um, even though Pearl Harbor was uh, seen as like ample reason to fully get America invested in World War II. So it's one of those circumstances where like um, a, a shitty situation turns into like one that ends up putting America on the right side of history for, the, for World War II at least. Yikes take. Wait, what? I didn't say anything bad. 
No, that guy was being sarcastic anyway. I, I just treated it as though it was serious. But he was sarcastically making that point. Yeah. No, I know they weren't justified in being sarcastic, but both the Yemen attacks and uh, Pearl Harbor attacks were for similar reasons. What? Hassan and Johnny have master skeleton keys and are cool with opening their doors? What the fuck? Country as part of a were they, though? The U.S. killed 500k civilians in like a month? No, I didn't talk about nuclear bombs or the firebombing campaign. I'm simply talking about the United States' involvement in World War II. Yes, that was an objective good. Hello? Are we crazy? What the fuck? I'm not going to fucking defend Imperial Japan. Are you out of your mind? Do you know the metric ton of war crimes that they did? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> what the fuck? Hello? An overnight bomb. Almost as many as Israel? No, definitely worse than Israel. Come the fuck on, guys. That's not even a question, okay? That's ridiculous. No, it's definitely worse than Israel. What Japan did in China is literally worse than Israel. That is, it's like, I can't believe we're doing oppression Olympics, but like, that is definitely worse, okay? Please, stop. Just because they've never apologized for uh, Nanking or or any uh, any of those other things, like Unit 731, does not, Nanjing, does not uh, change the, the reality that, like, they did really, really horrifying things, um, like Nazi-style shit, like Nazi shit. Korea, too, it's just, like, totally, totally, totally ridiculous. I mean, Japan at the time was a incredibly violent colonial power in the region. <clears throat> so, yeah. Just because they don't uh, recognize it and America never talks about it because Japan has been our ally ever since doesn't change that reality. Now, we didn't actually nuke, we didn't actually nuke Japan for those reasons. So, you know, our, our reaction to uh, Japan was also not super great either. We definitely went above and beyond. But yeah, no, it's not, it's not correct, I think to say that, like, Israel's crimes uh, are, are similar. Bombardment. So you can see that it's like a lot of these middlemen countries that the chips are being sort of trafficked through to evade sanctions. And this has given a lot of attention to a bunch of random countries that were never a part of this technology trade before. Like the Maldives, this island nation that is much more known for like Instagrammable vacation photos. They had no real semiconductor or microchip industry before this. And yet, right after Putin's invasion, the Maldives started seeing ships arrive with hundreds of thousands thousands of microchips arriving at their ports only to immediately turn around and head for Russia. But when they pull into the port, they do have to register with the customs agents. And so we have customs records, which shows us where this stuff is coming from. These records show us that a lot of these chips are coming from a company registered in Hong Kong, but who is owned by a company in Singapore, which is in turn owned by a company registered in the Seychelles Islands. Oh, and this company, which a Reuters Chinese. journalist found was just an empty office in Hong Kong full of boxes, Told has you. only one officer, a it's Spanish Chinese. citizen who owns an airplane club in Catalonia. And yet, somehow this company is responsible for over $200 million of electronics being sent to Russia, including $50,000 of Intel and AMD microchips. And as we saw, much of it flowing through the Maldives. I mean, do you see how this works? Like, yes, it is illegal for someone to send microchips from the United States of America to Russia. But when you have shell companies and middlemen countries that are not a part of the sanctions, you can kind of get around that pretty easily. There's this one company in China called King Pai Technology. They do the same thing. They buy Western chips from companies in like Let's India, go. and then they sell them to Russian companies that are known to do business with the Russian military. The United States government found out about this and cracked down. They put King it's Pai China Technology time. on the list. The sanctions list that says that American companies are not allowed to send them microchips. But lucky for them, they've got a bunch of other companies that do the exact same thing that aren't on the list. They have a whole network of these shell companies owned by these two guys that confusingly have the same last name. So these guys just keep sending Western microchips to the Russian military, now just under another name. The US caught on again and they cracked down on that company, but this will not stop them because 
they'll just operate out of another one of their shell companies. One day you're King Pi technology, the next day you're 3H seed semiconductor. This is the game of whack-a-mole that enforcers are stuck in. Shell companies are disposable, they're pieces of paper. So it's really hard, really slow, really complicated and difficult to enforce. And in many cases, the middleman countries like the Maldives have no real incentive to crack down on this. All it means for them is just more traffic through their ports. Like you've got Russia's neighbor, Kazakhstan, where imports of microchips mysteriously- Yeah, I was about to say, well, <clears throat> the other side of the story that Johnny Harris is not mentioning is that the EU countries are doing the exact same thing in reverse when it comes to buying natural gas, literally. Like almost every single person is finding a way to get around the sanctions by way of either Kazakhstan or directly through India. So all they did was add a, a middleman, but, but Kazakhstan is rising up as a consequence. So we're on board. You know what I mean? Um, the only thing is like, they, they don't have McDonald's and shit. You know what I mean? I guess they have like off-brand McDonald's now doubled after Russia's full-scale invasion. Because now you've got smugglers using it as a middleman, like this Dutch guy who started shipping microchips to Russia via Kazakhstan to disguise the real destination. Some of this stuff is so obvious, like Kyrgyzstan, a country that almost no one on earth has ever heard about, but what? who saw a huge increase in their imports from That's Germany insane that after he just all these said sanctions. That, that is almost a 1,000. Okay, bro, come on. That was the most Amerabrained, like former Mormon, former Mormon bullshit. That's crazy he said that. Nobody knows who this country is. Like, what the fuck? Thousand percent increase, which like, they're not complaining. This just means more activity of imports from other countries. Even though we all kind of know that they're just a middleman for smuggling stuff into Russia now. So that's the answer. That's how Russia is getting Western-made microchips into their country, despite all of these sanctions that should make it illegal. This is how they're fueling their war machine. That leaked report that we saw from the Ukrainian government was a plea for help. It was a sounding of the alarm bells. It was given to Western diplomats at a summit to basically say, hey guys, thanks for all the money that you're giving to us, the weapons, the anti-missile and anti-air defenses. Yeah, except like, because the Western diplomats didn't do shit about it, it's it's leaked, it's made its way into Financial Times and all these other outlets, and now made its way to Johnny Harris. And that, why don't they just shut down the companies that are smuggling? Because they open up new ones. Um, it's all it's very, very difficult to shut down, I think. And they always they're because the the entire principle is like free trade. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, we got to we're we're still selling American product. We're still selling American product. It's not like we're going to crack down on like American manufacturers selling when they can always say, "Well, we sold to a fucking third party. Like we did our due diligence." Also, the thing is like I think it's plausible deniability. I think a lot of these guys know who the fuck they're selling to and how it's getting its way making its way into Russia. <laughs> like I I I don't believe that these guys are like, "Oh man, I can't believe that these weapons are, or these chips made their way into like <laughs> into Russian hands. Oh no, that's so sad. I don't give a fuck. Play both sides and you always come out on top. That's it. But you're also giving technology to our enemy. Those drones and missiles that we're shooting down with your defenses, they also have your technology in them. But if we stop this chain, Ukraine needs less from the United States. So basically what happens now is that the United States is providing weapons that defend Ukraine from weapons produced with the help of companies from- I thought that was a Lenin bus with like a fat, Lenin bus with a fat mustache. The United States. There isn't any immediate solution, but what we can do is we can just gum up their supply chains. We can arrest their intelligence officers. We can introduce crap into their supply chains. We can just make it longer, more difficult, more expensive. This story is useful for us to understand because it's one of the best examples of how war is changing how large-scale war works in our modern world, how these little silicon chips are vital for any modern army, and that those who produce them think that they're the gatekeepers, that they can stop the world from getting their hands on this tech. And what we're seeing is they really 
can't, at least not fully. No matter what the US and its allies do to try to control who gets microchips and who doesn't, the complexity of the global economy makes it nearly impossible to do so. And yet, that doesn't mean they shouldn't keep trying. But here we're talking about protecting the lives of... It's Taras Bulba, Lenin statues literally illegal in Ukraine as a part of decommunization. They are fake friends to Lenin. That's messed up. Ukrainians being fake friends to Lenin is... Messed up, dude. Statue of a dictator is illegal. Yeah, dude. Real bad guy. Real bad guy, that Lenin. Maybe it's a Lenin bust with fake mustaches to disguise them. So the thing is, like, in the USSR, they did de-Stalinization, but they never obviously, um, they, they never obviously did anything about Lenin, understandably. Because, as always, you know, um, he uh, did did some good things. I mean, even Stalin did some good things, like fighting Nazis, but, but then also a lot of bad things, too. Um, anyway, Lenin. Civilians, right? It's a solvable issue. It's a complicated issue, but it's a solvable issue. And that's what gets me, is that if I knew, personally, that some kind of action from myself can help save an innocent person, I'd definitely do it. And I hope that people in the States or people in, in Europe would also feel this way about protecting Ukrainians. Conservatives are now speculating that Deep State altered weather to change the Republican primary results. Really? I love that. Is the H-A-A-R-P disrupting the Iowa caucus? That's so sick. It's pretty funny. <clears throat> I've been to Ukraine a few times and supposedly from what I was told, the only Lenin statue was in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. So many people in here confuse Lenin with Stalin. And no, they just don't care. And And neither does anyone that makes like um, anti, like, across the board, people that come in here, and just like the other ones that are, uh, just like the other ones that were uh, earlier today, was like, no communism, uh, and no fascism, like, you know, communists and the, and the Nazis are the same, like, the guys that do that, the double genocide stuff, um, double genocide theory, they make no distinctions amongst anyone, they just say, like, it's all bad. <sighs> Uh, in America, it doesn't really matter. Americans just are stupid. But yeah.